Hello, Linda Grace here. I'm just getting ready to go into my dentist to have my mercury amalgam fillings, well, the first three of them taken out. And so I know that it's very controversial. Nobody really knows if mercury does affect the MS affliction, but we know that mercury isn't good for us either way. So I'm gonna give it, a, I'm gonna start. I have so many fillings. When I was a kid, I got them as an adult was getting fillings. Um, they stopped doing the amalgam a while back, but I still have, I think, 11 amalgam fillings. And so I'm going to get the first three taken out today. And I'll let you know the information that I find out so that you can decide if this is something that you would like to do. And we'll see if it has any influence on my walking ability. I don't know if it will, but it can't hurt. <laughs> so, okay, so I'll see you there. I would like to introduce you to Dr. Hronken who is going to be removing my mercury amalgam fillings. We've got a whole lifetime full of mercury in my mouth, and so he's going to do a little bit more at a time. And I'd like to, you to tell us, Dr. Hronken, how do you feel about removing mercury? Well, I haven't used amalgam filling material for seven going on eight years. Uh, it is a material that's still used in dentistry. I choose not to. Uh, I don't like the way it looks. Also, you know, of course, amalgam filling material does have mercury, which I don't generally uh, like to put in people's mouths. Uh, when you're placing the filling, or a filling's broken, leaking, or removing the filling, those are times when you can be exposed to the mercury. Uh, when we're going to be removing your fillings, we'll be sure to isolate with a rubber dam, use suction to minimize any of that exposure to you. Um, so that's pretty much how I feel about the amalgam filling material. The com new composites we have in the past, the reason they weren't used on back fillings uh, is because it was a strength issue. The new composites uh, in most situations are as strong, if not stronger, than the amalgam filling material. Perfect. How, how would somebody find so someone like you, a dentist like you, who understands the danger of uh, removing mercury fillings? You know, it, within dental schools, uh, conventional training, they don't cover a lot of you know, specifics for the, to minimizing mercury exposure. Uh, it's something that individual dentists kind of have to seek and find themselves. Um, best thing you can do as a patient, I guess, if it's a concern of yours, is to just be upfront with the dentist that you're seeing. Let them know what your concerns are um, and see what their, their feelings are on the subject. Not every dentist likes to uh, use rubber dams to place to remove fillings. Um, it's pretty much the only way you can truly minimize exposure to patients when the fillings are being removed. Um, so I guess the best thing, my recommendation would be just have a upfront talk with the dentist that you're seeing and, and make sure that you're on the same page when, when it comes time for removing the fillings. Perfect. Do you suggest to people who are in like my condition with multiple sclerosis, do you suggest that they take out their mercury? In general, when I have patients come in, I don't often recommend just removal uh, at random of all amalgam fillings. There are situations, you know, where you can potentially do more harm to a tooth when you remove a filling. However, that being said, if the filling's leaking, worn, decayed, it needs to be removed. There are patients that I think that have other health concerns that can be tied in with the mercury issue. Um, it can be kind of a nebulous subject because it's not the same for every patient. So as a general rule, I don't always recommend removing a lot of fillings, but in your case, I think it's one of the things that we can do to potentially help you, and uh, at least in our minds to know that you are no longer going to be exposed to any of the mercury, so case by case, I guess. Okay. Thank you very much. No problem. Appreciate it. We even had a float plan go by. That was perfect. <laughs> I had time to get the videos and do all that busy stuff. Michelle and I am Dr. Horonkin's dental assistant and I assisted on you today Linda. This is a little goodie bag for you. It has your post-op instructions, some of the things that Dr. Horonkin already went over with you and some sterile gauze for you to take home and switch out when you need to, okay? Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. I'm back. I had two fillings, two mercury fillings replaced with ones that are healthier or better for me and I had a tooth pulled my I had a root canal earlier and it got infected I don't know if it um, wasn't sealed up properly when the uh, root canal was done or if it was cracked because of a I, I don't have any idea why but there was an infection so 
Dr. Horonkin removed the tooth and, and then took out the two mercury, two of the mercury fillings that were in the same area. Now, I probably won't be seeing results for a long time because for insurance purposes, I'm waiting till I have the insurance coverage and it will take probably two years or at least through next year. Anyway, so I will continue to remove the mercury and hopefully see results. And Dr. Horonkin is awesome and his staff is fabulous. And so it was very smooth and easy. I didn't have any pain, a little discomfort, but he said if I, as my mouth heals, I'll probably be feeling some pain, but ibuprofen will probably take care of it. And just in case, he gave me some painkillers. And right now I'm still numb and I'm having a little bit a hard time speaking because my inside of my mouth is really numb, but luckily it's not showing on the outside. <laughs> And so, so there you have it. So visit me at msrelief.com and I will show, I will tell you what the medical journals say about mercury and the um, connection between that and symptoms, between MS symptoms. And so visit me at msrelief.com and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.